The air in Earth's command center was thick with tension. Every screen displayed the approaching alien fleet, each vessel bristling with weapons and reinforced with armor beyond anything humanity had seen before. They'd been warned, given a simple, clear message, but the alien council had laughed. Earth's last transmission had been dismissed as the desperate flailing of a doomed species. And perhaps, from the alien's perspective, that's all it was. A young race standing against a force that had crushed far older and wiser civilizations, leaving nothing but dust and memories. The alien race, the Kralax, held a reputation that echoed across the galaxy, a species without mercy or restraint. Where they went, worlds burned, and remnants of resistance were scooped up like relics for study, trophies for their empire. They hadn't lost a battle in centuries, their names spoken in whispers, their conquests told as warnings in distant galaxies. The Kralaks thrived on the fear they inspired and had grown complacent in their power. Earth, with its fractured alliances and limited reach, didn't even register as a threat. And that final warning, sent from a planet they deemed primitive, had only confirmed their arrogance. Across the command center, Earth's highest leaders gathered. They were silent, watching as the fleet drew closer, filling the screen with its menacing formations. To them, this was more than a fight for survival. This was the culmination of centuries of progress, unity, and defiance against overwhelming odds. They knew the Kralax expected surrender, subjugation, and easy victory. But Earth was done pleading. The warning had been the last, because there was no point in repeating it. Humanity knew what it was facing, but they were prepared to go down fighting. In that final transmission, Earth's ambassador had delivered a stark message, one that held no promise of mercy. You are not the first to think us weak. You will not be the last to learn otherwise. There was nothing more to say. Every ounce of ingenuity, every bit of technology, and every spark of resilience had been poured into this final stand. Earth would not beg. As the fleet crossed the outer edge of the solar system, the Kralaks barely bothered to raise their shields. Their systems detected Earth's satellites, orbital defenses, and fleets positioned near the planet, yet the aliens saw it as only a minor hindrance, a nuisance to be brushed aside. They mocked humanity's efforts, interpreting the mobilized forces as little more than bravado. In their arrogance, they saw no reason to heed the warning, no reason to fear the thin blue planet in the distance. They were prepared for a slaughter, a swift campaign to further cement their dominance. But Earth was prepared for them, in ways the Kralax hadn't foreseen. Despite the staggering odds, humanity had invested heavily in its last line of defense, a culmination of technologies developed and guarded for this very day. Every nation had pooled resources, minds, and expertise. Rivalries had been set aside, conflicts delayed, every human asset trained and focused for this single moment. They had planned and drilled, creating strategies and failsafes to counter the alien empire. Earth was no longer fractured. They were one people, united by a shared purpose. The Kralax fleet advanced, massive battleships looming like gods in the dark. The Kralax commanders exchanged messages, some relishing the chance to test their latest weapons on a new species. To them, Earth was a mere speed bump on the path to greater galactic expansion. They joked that the human warning had been almost poetic, quaint, but ultimately meaningless. They had crushed far more advanced civilizations and left legends in their wake. And as they drifted closer, arrogance blinding them to the preparations Earth had hidden, humanity's patience wore thin. In the command center, the leaders exchanged quiet words, expressions steeled against the looming threat. They knew this was likely the last stand, that the cost would be staggering. Yet there was no hesitation. No fear was shown on their faces, though they could feel it in their bones. This wasn't a fight to win. It was a fight to prove, a testament to what humanity had become. The alien fleet spread out, preparing to strike from multiple angles, intending to surround and overwhelm Earth's defenses with sheer numbers and firepower. In their eyes, humanity's few orbital stations and defenses were a pitiful sight, unable to withstand the first strike. They believed their victory would be swift and absolute. And why wouldn't they? They'd won every war for the past five hundred years. This was just another primitive species standing in their path. 
the Kralax commander, with centuries of battle experience, didn't even bother raising shields. The planet's defenses would crumble in seconds, he thought. Humanity would be scattered like so many before them, and Earth would be one more trophy, one more system added to the Kralax Empire. Their scans showed every defense point on Earth, every asset humanity had positioned in their path. And yet, not one alien commander saw the truth. Humanity was waiting for them, watching, daring them to make the first move. In those final moments before the first strike, silence filled Earth's command center. The leaders held their breath, a sense of inevitability hanging in the air. Yet, in their eyes was a glimmer of something defiant, something unbreakable. They had already sent a warning, knowing full well it would be ignored, understanding the alien mind was incapable of viewing humanity as an equal. But Earth's defenses were armed, every protocol set, every human soldier, pilot, and engineer prepared to face the unknown. In that silence, as the Kralax laughed in their arrogance, Earth's leaders exchanged one last look, a silent agreement shared among them. They had done all they could to prepare. The rest was up to the resilience, the grit, and the indomitable spirit that had driven humanity through centuries of war, peace, discovery, and survival. As the alien fleet surged closer, the vastness of its power became evident. Battleships spanned miles, casting shadows over smaller craft bristling with weaponry, all part of a colossal armada hurtling toward Earth. The Kralax had brought their full might, an entire invasion force with every resource necessary to dominate swiftly. Their formation was precise, each ship locked in a pattern perfected through centuries of interstellar warfare. They entered Earth's solar system with clinical confidence, certain of their impending victory, dismissing the final warning as irrelevant. From Earth's point of view, the situation seemed hopeless. The defensive satellites, hastily armed with every available weapon, looked like toys next to the alien armada. Earth's defenders knew they were outgunned and outmatched. Yet, they held their positions, each soldier, pilot, and commander steeling themselves against the overwhelming odds. Civilians across the planet were instructed to seek shelter, though everyone knew these defenses would offer little protection against the Kralax. The ground forces, hidden in bunkers and fortified locations, waited for orders, watching live feeds of the alien fleet as it moved closer. Each moment heightened the tension, stretching every second into an eternity. Earth's leaders kept communication lines open with every defense team, conveying the gravity of the situation in their steady, calm voices. Despite the aliens' colossal fleet, they projected unity and strength, a quiet resolve that spread to every soldier and civilian. There were no illusions here. This was a fight for survival, a final stand that would demand every ounce of courage and sacrifice. The Kralax fleet now loomed near Earth's defenses and a momentary hush fell over their command centers. Scanners swept across Earth's assets, evaluating every orbital station, every satellite, every ship in Earth's hastily assembled fleet. The Kralax commanders dismissed them as weak and outdated, vessels too small and weapons too primitive to pose any real threat. Amused by Earth's attempts to mount a defense, they barely registered it as a challenge. The alien fleet split into strategic positions around the planet, ready to strike. The Kralax viewed themselves as artists of war, their attacks meticulously coordinated and nearly flawless in execution. Their history was one of conquest, and every commander aboard their ships had known nothing but victory. Earth, they believed, would be no different. With a sweep of their hand, the Kralax fleet released its first wave of attacks, laser cannons and energy missiles firing simultaneously, aimed at every major point of Earth's defenses. The initial barrage shook the outer defenses, sending shockwaves through space that resonated down to Earth's surface. Smaller satellites were obliterated instantly, their fragments scattering into space, while defense stations struggled to maintain their shields. The blasts lit up the night sky from the ground, a haunting reminder of the enemy's reach and power. The Kralax watched, entertained by the devastation their weaponry could produce. Yet, despite the destruction, Earth's defenses held on retaliating in calculated bursts. Earth's ships launched coordinated attacks, using every weapon in their arsenal, from ballistic missiles to experimental laser technology. They moved with practiced efficiency, 
each shot aimed carefully, making the most of limited resources. The alien fleet, seemingly unperturbed, met these attacks with laughter and scorn, convinced of their superiority. In their eyes this was no battle, it was a display of dominance. Earth's command center monitored every clash, every loss, every slight breach in the defenses. They were fully aware of their limitations but saw each small victory as a crucial moment bought in this fight for survival. The leaders encouraged their forces over the communication lines, ensuring no one wavered, reminding them of the purpose behind their sacrifices. Each moment they held the line, humanity's spirit remained unbroken. The Kralaks intensified their assault, their commanders ordering the annihilation of Earth's remaining orbital platforms. Earth's defense teams adapted, moving smaller vessels into evasive maneuvers, using any resource available to stay one step ahead of the relentless attacks. They made use of every terrain advantage, using the moon's shadow, asteroid fields, and debris from destroyed satellites as cover. Every tactic, no matter how small, was employed to slow the alien onslaught. But the Kralax were relentless, their advanced targeting systems calculating every movement, every evasion, locking onto Earth's forces with deadly precision. They fired with chilling efficiency, ships destroyed in seconds, weapons systems overwhelmed, and orbital stations breached and rendered inoperable. Earth's defenses were faltering, weakening under the sheer weight of the Kralax's concentrated firepower. The alien commanders grew more assured, now viewing their efforts as a predictable victory. They did not see Earth as an adversary worthy of respect or caution, but rather as a lesson in subjugation, another conquest to add to their list. They believed they had seen Earth's full hand, that no more surprises lay in wait. Each Kralax officer issued orders with the confidence of a conqueror, the same indifference they'd shown a hundred other planets in their empire's path. For humanity, the situation grew more desperate, yet no one backed down. Every fighter pilot, every ground officer, and every defense technician was aware of the stakes. Earth's forces pushed forward, determined to buy as much time as possible, to show the aliens that their people would not simply surrender. Communications remained open, every soldier aware of the progress, every victory broadcasted, every loss acknowledged. The leaders' voices remained steady, bolstering Earth's resolve, reminding every man and woman of the strength within them. The Kralax continued pressing, striking at Earth's defenses with systematic brutality, confident that each blow would finally break humanity's resolve. They had encountered defiance before, but in their eyes, Earth's defenses were laughable. To them, humanity was a flickering candle in the wind, one that would be snuffed out without a trace. Each time Earth's forces retaliated, the Kralax responded with a new barrage, every assault calculated to crush what little hope remained. It was a game to them, one where the end was already decided. Yet humanity did not waver. In every corner of Earth, people stood together, united in defiance. Despite the devastation raining from above, they clung to the hope that their sacrifice would not be in vain. Their defense systems, though limited, operated at maximum capacity, targeting every Kralax ship within range, determined to show the invaders that Earth was far more than a simple conquest. The Kralax commanders noted the continued resistance with amusement, puzzled by humanity's tenacity. They saw Earth's actions as stubborn, a last-ditch attempt to delay the inevitable. Their invasion tactics were proven, their technology unmatched. They could not fathom that a species as young as humanity would pose any real threat to their empire. They pushed forward, ready to obliterate Earth's remaining defenses, to finally claim their prize. But deep in the heart of Earth's command center, humanity's leaders exchanged glances, aware of something the Kralax had overlooked. Earth's forces may have been pushed to the brink. The Kralax ships closed in, confident in their impending victory. Their commanders reviewed Earth's weakened defenses with satisfaction, ready to unleash the final wave of attacks. But in the depths of Earth's command center, a quiet, deliberate command was given. In that instant, humanity unveiled its hidden countermeasure, a technology developed in secret, kept under wraps even from its own allies until the last possible moment. Earth's defenders had prepared for this encounter for years, designing weapons and systems meant to turn the tide in ways the Kralax could never anticipate. 
the first strike came without warning. The alien fleet's communication systems, once seamless and faultless, began to waver. Officers barked orders, trying to reestablish the clear lines that had been a pillar of their strength. Systems flickered, reports became garbled, and some ships even lost control as their own computers turned against them. Humanity had unleashed an advanced AI, programmed not just for defense but to infiltrate and hijack alien systems directly. It tore through the Kralax network with surgical precision, weaving its way through the systems that had once seemed impenetrable. This AI, created from the latest advancements in quantum computing, learned and adapted with each second, spreading through the fleet and embedding itself in each system it touched. Within minutes, the effects were unmistakable. The sleek, disciplined formations of the Kralax fleet began to fragment, as ships veered off course, others failing to respond to commands. Panic set in among the alien commanders as they watched their vessels drift out of formation, caught in a web of interference and malfunction. Alien weapons went silent, sensors failed, and crucial engines stalled as humanity's AI burrowed deeper into their systems. The Kralax's confidence wavered, their pride giving way to confusion and fear. With their ships compromised, the Kralax struggled to regain control, issuing override commands to reclaim their systems. But every attempt was countered by humanity's relentless AI, adapting faster than the aliens could react. This wasn't the scattered resistance they'd expected. It was a coordinated, merciless assault on the heart of their fleet's power, disarming them from within. Human forces took full advantage, launching an offensive across multiple fronts, hitting the alien ships that had fallen out of formation, picking off targets with ruthless precision. Every missile, laser, and projectile was targeted to exploit weaknesses created by the AI's interference, hitting engines, weapon systems, and critical points with deadly accuracy. For the first time, the Kralax knew fear. The galaxy's most formidable fleet was disarmed, confused, and unable to fight back. The alien commanders desperately scanned for patterns, for anything that could explain the sudden loss of control. But all they saw was chaos, each ship struggling with internal malfunctions, each officer shouting conflicting reports. They tried to reboot systems, to flush out the AI, but Earth's creation had become more than just a program. It was a weapon of pure, adaptive intelligence, capable of bending to every change in the Kralax systems. As the human forces pressed their attack, the Kralax fleet took devastating losses. Ships collided as guidance systems failed, projectiles detonated inside their own holds, and laser arrays turned against friendly vessels. The Kralax commanders issued frantic orders to retreat, to regroup, but the AI blocked these commands, seizing control of navigation systems, forcing alien ships further into the reach of Earth's waiting firepower. Each Kralax vessel became an isolated target, trapped, unable to support the others. The once mighty fleet was now a series of isolated ships, vulnerable and exposed, each one a sitting target for Earth's forces. Human pilots, engineers, and ground crews worked in perfect unison, launching waves of attacks that grew bolder with each strike. Fighter squadrons weaved in and out of the alien fleet's fragmented formations, exploiting every malfunction, every gap in defenses, turning the tide of the battle. The pride of the Kralax Empire was slowly torn apart, each ship a testament to their own hubris, each loss a reminder of the mistake they've made in underestimating Earth. Earth's forces held nothing back, pressing the attack with a fury honed by years of preparation pushing the Kralax deeper into their confusion and panic. The AI's grip tightened as it identified the Kralax's command ship, the centerpiece of their fleet. The Kralax commander, once so sure of victory, watched in horror as his own systems began to betray him. The command ship's lights flickered, the control panels flashed, and screens went dark as the AI worked its way into the heart of the vessel. He barked orders, trying to reestablish control, but every effort was futile. He knew then that this was no ordinary resistance. This was a systematic dismantling, a calculated destruction orchestrated by an enemy that was far more formidable than he had ever imagined. One by one, human ships surrounded the Kralax command vessel, their weapons trained on its once imposing hull. For a moment, the commander's screen flickered back on, 
and he found himself face to face with the display that read Earth's final message. You were warned. With that, Earth's forces unleashed a concentrated barrage, sending the Kralax command ship into a blaze of fire and debris, reducing it to nothing but a memory. With their command ship gone, the remaining Kralax vessels fell into complete disarray. Officers scrambled to regain order, but the AI continued its assault, blocking communications, cutting power, and jamming weapons. One by one, alien ships turned from unstoppable weapons of war into floating wrecks, each caught in the same relentless attack, each one a silent testament to Earth's resilience and cunning. Every ship that tried to flee found its engines disabled. Every attempt to fire met with systems failure. Humanity had taken control of the battlefield. As the last ships fell silent, the few remaining Kralaks finally understood. They had ignored Earth's warning, dismissed humanity's potential, and paid the ultimate price for their arrogance. The AI completed its final sweep, deactivating itself and leaving the remnants of the Kralax fleet drifting, defeated and broken. Human forces circled the battlefield, confirming that the alien ships were now nothing more than debris, stripped of power, defenseless in the silence of space. What had started as an overwhelming show of alien dominance had ended in catastrophic failure. The Kralax fleet, once invincible, was now nothing more than wreckage scattered across Earth's orbit each piece a monument to their own hubris. Earth's forces took a breath, the weight of their victory settling in, aware that they had not only defended their planet but had proven, once and for all, that humanity was not to be underestimated. The galaxy would remember this day, not as the day Earth fell, but as the day humanity erased a fleet once thought unstoppable in mere seconds. The Kralax fleet was in disarray, their once perfect formations now a scattered mess of malfunctioning ships. Communication lines were in shambles, with orders cut off mid-transmission and responses lost to the void. Chaos reigned where order had once ruled. Kralax soldiers, once pillars of confidence and power, now found themselves helpless, cut off from their leaders, their screens blank, and their ships barely under control. In the dim, flickering lights of the command centers, confusion quickly turned to dread as they realized the magnitude of their mistake. Earth's forces, once a minor inconvenience, had dismantled the might of the Kralax Empire piece by piece, and there was no way out. Earth's forces pressed their advantage without hesitation. Human pilots, driven by the sight of a weakening enemy, struck with relentless precision. Squadrons of fighter jets zipped between crippled alien vessels, delivering swift, decisive strikes that disabled engines and obliterated weapons systems. The Kralax's advanced technology was now a liability. Every system turned against them as Earth's forces exploited weaknesses they hadn't known existed. The alien fleet, fractured and vulnerable, could do nothing but brace for the incoming onslaught, their towering superiority crumbling in real time. Aboard the remaining ships, Kralax officers shouted for commands, frantically trying to organize a retreat. But each attempt was thwarted, every engine they tried to ignite sputtering and failing. Power systems overloaded life support systems fluctuated, and any attempt to fight back was met with the same maddening silence from their ship controls. They were, for the first time in their history, stripped of their dominance, and made powerless in the face of an enemy they thought beneath them. In desperation, some of the Kralax ships began to turn, breaking from the cluster to flee from the battlefield. But Earth's forces intercepted them, ensuring that no escape route remained. Every time an alien ship angled for open space, it was met with a volley of Earth's projectiles, missiles, and laser fire. The Kralax, caught between a formidable human assault and the self-sabotaging effects of their own technology, faced the ultimate reality of their downfall. Earth's forces took no chances, ensuring that each retreating ship was struck down before it could escape. They would not allow any survivor to carry word of their humiliating defeat back to the rest of the galaxy. The pride of the Kralax Empire was reduced to a graveyard in orbit, shattered fragments of once mighty ships floating as reminders of their arrogance. Earth's leaders monitored the progress from the command center, each update confirming that their strategy had worked beyond expectation. The Kralax fleet, once the terror of countless worlds, was crumbling, their empire's invincibility shattering in the silence of space. Humanity had turned the tables completely, 
forcing an alien superpower to its knees with a ruthlessness that would be remembered for generations. The remaining Kralax vessels, crippled and leaderless, were now nothing more than targets. Earth's forces moved in, delivering final strikes that rendered each alien ship inoperable. They took down engines, obliterated weapons, and targeted power systems until nothing remained but lifeless husks drifting in space. Earth had not come this far to leave the job half done. Every last remnant of the invading fleet would be dismantled, erased, so that no trace of this threat would ever return. The Kralax officers and soldiers aboard the remaining ships faced their end in horror, fully aware that this defeat would be the final chapter of their story. Gone was the arrogance, the superiority they had felt as they mocked Earth's last warning. The confidence they had brought with them, the absolute certainty of their own power, had turned to terror. Each officer, each soldier, knew that this defeat would reverberate through the galaxy. Earth, the planet they had dismissed as insignificant, had not only resisted but had erased them from existence with a merciless precision. As the last Kralax ship fell silent, Earth's forces pulled back to observe the wreckage. The debris floated quietly, a ghostly reminder of the fleet that had once been poised to conquer them. No triumphant cheers filled the command centers, no grand victory speeches were given. Earth's leaders simply observed the battlefield in silence. This was a moment of vindication, a testament to the strength and resolve that had carried humanity through its darkest hour. They had faced down the most feared empire in the galaxy and proven that Earth was a force not to be trifled with. Humanity had turned the page on a new chapter, one where they would no longer be seen as the defenseless, isolated planet on the edge of the galaxy. They had shown that, when pressed to the edge of survival, Earth could stand firm against even the most overwhelming odds. This victory would serve as a message to any other species that dared to consider Earth an easy target. They had warned the Kralax, offered them the chance to avoid this fate, but the invaders had ignored it, and they had paid the ultimate price. As Earth's forces withdrew, leaving only wreckage and silence in their wake, the reality of what they had achieved settled in. This victory had not come without cost and there was no certainty that Earth would remain unchallenged in the future. But for now, humanity had earned its place among the stars. They had shown that no matter the strength of the opponent, Earth would not yield. In the cold, empty silence of space, the remnants of the Kralax fleet drifted, lifeless. What had once been symbols of terror and domination now served as a solemn monument to humanity's resolve and unbreakable spirit. Earth had erased an empire's pride in mere seconds, and the galaxy would know, from this day forward, that humanity was not a species to be taken lightly. The battlefield was silent now, filled only with the floating remnants of what had once been an indomitable alien fleet. Earth's forces, victorious yet solemn, regrouped, each soldier and commander aware of the history they had just written. The Kralax, the most feared conquerors known across the galaxy had been wiped from the skies in a battle that would ripple through the cosmos. Humanity had won more than survival. They had secured respect, even fear, that would make any future aggressor think twice before challenging Earth. Across Earth, the news spread. The planet was safe, its people saved from what could have been total annihilation. For the first time since the invasion began, civilians left their shelters, greeted by the quiet but unmistakable relief that permeated the streets. The victory was as much a testament to human ingenuity and willpower as it was to the strength found in unity. People from every corner of the globe, regardless of background or nationality, had come together, and it was that unity that had turned the tide. Families reunited, loved ones embraced, and a collective sigh of relief echoed across the planet. In the command centers, Earth's leaders took a moment to absorb the enormity of their accomplishment. They had not only defended their world but had made a statement to the entire galaxy. The Kralax, who had ignored Earth's warning, were no more, their empire struck down by the very species they had deemed unworthy of respect. Earth's leaders understood the weight of this victory. It would be spoken of, not just on Earth but throughout the stars, a cautionary tale for any who believed humanity would fall easily. As the last remnants of the Kralax ships drifted through space, Earth's forces sent out a transmission, a message that would travel far beyond the reach of their own solar system. It was a broadcast, 
not for allies or even the people of earth, but for any other civilization that might be listening, for any empire that looked upon earth with the same eyes as the Kralax. The message was simple and clear, a declaration to the galaxy. Earth stands. And earth will stand against any who challenge it. The broadcast was short, leaving little to interpretation. Earth's message wasn't one of arrogance but of resolve. They had defended their planet with everything they had, not for conquest or glory, but for survival and peace. It was a reminder to all that humanity, despite being seen as a fledgling species, had the strength to protect itself. The Kralax defeat would serve as a silent but powerful warning, the wreckage of their fleet orbiting Earth as a testament to what happens when an enemy underestimates human resolve. The aftermath brought a wave of introspection. Humanity had proven itself in ways it had never before imagined. Earth's people, still celebrating their survival, began to look forward, understanding that this victory would change everything. They were no longer the vulnerable, isolated species they had once believed themselves to be. They had become a force, a collective with the courage and resilience to push back against any threat, no matter how advanced or powerful. This victory was a turning point. Earth scientists, engineers, and leaders knew they couldn't afford to become complacent. They had faced the threat and come out victorious, but they were well aware that the Kralax wouldn't be the last force to challenge them. The galaxy was vast, and countless unknown powers lurked in its depths. But humanity was no longer afraid. They had fought, they had won, and they had done so with unity and ingenuity. In the weeks following the battle, Earth's leaders held meetings, discussing how to prepare for the future. Resources were allocated to strengthen defenses, research advanced technology, and build alliances that would help safeguard Earth. They had learned that the universe was either kind nor forgiving. It was a place of competition, survival, and, at times, brutal conflict. But humanity was ready to embrace it, to stand as equals on the galactic stage, no longer mere observers but active participants. The people of Earth adjusted to this new reality, one where they were not alone in the universe but part of a broader, often dangerous, community of civilizations. It was both a challenge and an opportunity, a call to push beyond what they had thought possible. The Kralax invasion had been a crucible, forging humanity into something stronger. They would not retreat into isolation. They would look outward boldly, ready to face whatever awaited them. Every day, news from the battle spread farther, whispers of Earth's victory carried by traitors, travelers, and distant communications across galaxies. Earth had earned a new reputation. To many civilizations, the Kralax's downfall was unfathomable an empire brought low by the very species it had tried to subjugate. The legend of humanity's defense began to grow, reshaping Earth's image in the minds of distant worlds. No longer were they a quiet, insignificant planet. They were a world of survivors, of people who would not bow to intimidation or aggression. With every passing day, humanity's vision expanded. They knew that their world had become something of a beacon, a symbol of resistance and strength. Young children heard stories of the battle, growing up with an understanding of what humanity was capable of when united against a common enemy. There was a new spirit, a new pride that permeated across the planet, a feeling that Earth was now part of something greater than itself. They were no longer just inhabitants of a single world, they were a species with a place among the stars. As the final remnants of the Kralax fleet disintegrated in space, Earth continued its preparations now aware of its place in a vast and often hostile galaxy. They would remain vigilant, always ready to defend their world, but also open to the possibilities the stars held. This victory had given them more than survival. It had given them the confidence to dream of a future where humanity was not only safe but thriving among countless other civilizations. Earth had proven itself, not just to the Kralax but to anyone watching, friend or foe. They had issued a warning, and they had followed through. Their victory would be spoken of, remembered, and respected. And as Earth looked up at the night sky, its people understood that they had crossed the threshold. They were no longer merely the children of Earth. They were pioneers, warriors, and survivors, ready for whatever the universe would bring next.